Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. I just did a deep dive on AIP and my view is that AIP is moving much faster than analysts believe and is therefore likely to increase operating margins way beyond expectations in the near future, driving the stock up meaningfully over the coming five years. Indeed, I believe that if AIP continues to progress at this rate, this is actually Palantir's path to $500 per share or even way more down the line. Much of the discussion around Palantir revolves around the stock price, but it a deep dive into the evolution of Palantir's AIP, artificial intelligence platform, suggests the controversy is likely futile. By enabling the encapsulation of higher order patterns, Palantir can reduce any third-party software product to a few lines of code. And this is real. I checked myself. I looked at the demos in Palantir's developers YouTube channel. And man, is this thing real. AIP is now to code development what AWS has been to computing. For example, say your company needs to manage support tickets in five different languages daily. Addressing this workflow via the traditional method requires a dedicated software platform and support specialists that speak five different languages. Palantir's AIP gets rid of all of that by allowing you to embed different LLMs and having them safely interact with all of your company's operational data. The first LLM converts support tickets from any language to English and vice versa, and the second one reasons through the support ticket to then resolve it. This resulting infrastructure is also autonomous because it's just a AI models running on their own. Effectively, encapsulating higher order patterns enables companies to both save costs and focus on more creative endeavors, which make money. It's a whole new way of running companies, which is best summarized by the graph that I'm showing on the screen now. On the left, you have how the old world would work in which in order to get something done, you basically have lots of code, usually in the form of a third party platform that gets stuff done for you with many employees. AIP's world is basically a bunch of LLMs embedded that do the whole thing for you automatically without the need for employees or third-party software. And it's actually autonomous because as I was saying, it's just AI models doing their thing. Since its launch, AIP has evolved to the point where someone with relatively basic coding skills could implement such a system and have it work across an entire organization in just a few hours when it would previously take months. There's also no limit to how many LLMs you can embed, which means that there's also no limit in terms of how much you can automate a company. Generally, the the idea of embedding AI models as such and seamlessly connecting them to an ontology can render the whole enterprise software market obsolete. In 2023, that market was valued at something like $230 billion in the US. So the runway ahead is quite large. This presentation by Anivan Mukherjee, I hope I pronounced that well, Palantir's head of AI slash ML solutions demonstrates the aforementioned capabilities. The main takeaway from this lecture is that by taking care of all the security and infrastructure requirements in the background, AIP enables the creation of autonomous organizations with very simple code. Months of coding have now been reduced to a few lines of code that equate to autonomous operations. The presentation is somewhat technical, so I'll break down key moments for you. However, my primary observation is that the video is only three weeks old, which means that the aforementioned capabilities have likely only just gone into production. They make AIP quite easy to use, which means that Palantir's operating margins are set to rise even further in the coming quarters, probably faster than most investors believe. AIP has been the primary driver of Palantir's expanding operating margin, which you can see depicted in the graph on the screen now. As AIP gets better, it makes Palantir software easier to install and use, ultimately driving more sales and more business. Every time I check on AIP's evolution deeply beyond the headlines, I see exponential progress. And my view remains that Palantir's top line and margins are set to continue rising speedily from here, way beyond expectations. In the next clip that I'm gonna show on the screen now, you will see an Irvan, I hope I pronounced that well, man, I'm really sorry, I'm probably getting it very wrong, displaying the insights yielded by a model that he's programmed on AIP to flag suspicious customer behavior for a hypothetical bank. In the previous few minutes of the lecture, he shows how easy it is to program the model via both pro code and low code approaches. This is obviously a toy example, but you can perfectly see how the real thing now takes way less time than it used to via hard coding and eliminates the need for a lot of previously indispensable manual work and down here where you can select a model instead of using one of the palantir built-in models we're able to to choose um perplexity here and uh and now we can now we can give us a world right let's say um let's take someone who we know is uh um, has gotten into trouble poor fellow um and uh, not really. 
<laughs> and, and, and here's our output, right? It's using that model as, as the language model in this AIP logic flow. And of course, as we, you know, as we, as we try these models, you know, in the context of our existing workflows, we want to see like, how well does this work, right? And we can actually use this also in evals, right? So Rand, we can see, you know, on in other cases, you know, is it pulling up information that we, that we expect it to pull up, right? So it's getting a lot of things. Maybe we need to do a little bit more prompt engineering here, but by and large, it's on a number of these test cases, it's able to pull in time, you know, timely data about these entities. So that's pretty cool. Seems pretty promising. For the new ones here, this is only really possible because Palantir has spent the past 20 years perfecting digital twins, what they refer to as the ontology, which are an exhaustive digital copy of your company's operations. Because they have all your company's data neatly stored, they can then go on to build a piece of software, in this case AIP, that allows you to leverage all your data assets seamlessly. In the next clip, you will see Anivan showing how you can create an AI model and turn it into an agent that can then go and perform actions on the ontology autonomously. What's striking in this part of the video is how even though I haven't coded for more than three years now, it makes me feel like I could perfectly create an AI agent to pursue a certain business goal on my own. So if I were working somewhere and they had Palantir AIP deployed, I'm pretty sure I could use it to make some very cool things. This is indicative of tremendous progress in terms of making Palantir software easier to deploy and use. And we know what that means likely. That means much higher operating margins going forward. So this is something called a model adapter. We basically define what goes in. This is how you bind it to the ontology um, and write a predict function. In this case, instead of this predict function writing, running a machine learning model per se, it's just going to invoke our agent. And that's a, uh, a Palantir modeling package that you can import to just do those 10 lines to define your API there. Ex that's exactly correct. Um, and then we can now uh, save this to a model in the platform. Um, that's kind of what what this is all about. This basically saves this as a, a model asset, model artifact in the platform that we can then deploy and launch. So here's our here's our model that we've saved it. I've I've already deployed it, right? We can check the the health of this, you know, anything we might want to do with a um, with the with a deployment. So that's replicas, logging the interface to actually call it and experiment with it. Exactly, right. And and this isn't super resource intensive because it's it's proxying out to a large language model, but we can we can set up our auto scaling policy, anything that we want to do around this. Um, and you can see behind the scenes what it's done is it's actually um, it's actually captured, you know, the entire environment and and packaged up packaged up basically as a compute module. I would think of as foundry models is basically data derived compute modules, right? It's using the same infrastructure and, and, and we're managing it in the same way, but we didn't have to write our own Docker image in this case. At this rate of improvement, AIP is likely to become as easy to use as email. Email was once an exclusive thing, but now it's the first thing people set up when they start a new project and it literally takes five minutes. My view is that down this path, eventually it's going to get so easy to build on Palantir's digital twins that setting up a digital twin just as you get started with your new company is going to be the norm. Over the long term, this should translate into a scale of operation orders of magnitude larger than today for Palantir. Over the next decade, I believe we are going to see Palantir's operating margins tracking AIP's ease of use as we have seen since April 2023. The easier it gets to use, the more money Palantir will make and the higher margins it will have. Although Palantir's market cap of 154 billion is generous at just over 56 times sales, AIP's current pace of evolution sets Palantir on a course for its yearly revenue to outpace its current market cap over the long term. The numbers in the graph below are illustrative beyond Q3 2024, but they serve to distill the thesis. Embedded in the thesis is the idea that AIP will eventually yield network effects, whereby Palantir will go from providing digital twins to also connecting them. Once your company runs on Palantir and all your providers and clients are on the platform too, why not connect the digital twins to speed up operations even further? I believe this will meaningfully increase Palantir's revenue per customer in time, and so the combination of AIP getting better and then Palantir connecting digital twins, I believe is going to drastically surprise the market in the coming decade. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining me. And if you enjoyed it, can I please ask you to share this with one friend? These deep dives are for free. And so the only way this grows is with your help. Thank you very much. Take care and until next time.